Um, you're working on another book right now that's called How to Live. Uh, <laughs> it's it yes. and it's interesting to me actually in context of everything that we've spoken about so far that um your approach to life is in some ways unconventional and probably rubs a lot of people wrong because it goes counter to how uh, a lot of other people operate and a lot of their expectations so uh in that context a book that is titled How to Live is particularly interesting. So can you dig into what that's going to be about? It is not what you expect. It is so exciting. Um, okay. Uh, if you had to make me pick my favorite single book of all time, if you said, no, 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 not top 10, pick one, it would probably be the book Sum, S-U-M, by David Eagleman. Uh, it is a tiny, creative, fascinating book with, uh, its subtitle is uh, 40 Tales of the Afterlives. And what he does is the format is fascinating. It's basically every chapter is answering the question, what happens when you die? But it's answering it in a radically different way. And each chapter is standalone. Like it's each chapter deliberately conflicts all the other chapters. So it'll be like, chapter three. When you die, you're surrounded by a bunch of thuggish little creatures looking at you saying, what does answer? What does answer? And you find out uh, after a while that what you knew of as your life was actually an artificial intelligence program. You are an artificial intelligence program that they wrote to go figure out the meaning of life. And now that the program has stopped running, they're trying to get the answers out of you. And so you try to tell them what you learned about life, but every time you tell them, they just look at each other and furrow their brows and say, what is answer? And you realize that were we to write an artificial intelligence program smarter than us, we would be too dumb to understand its answers. That's it, that'll be like one chapter. Then the next chapter will say, when you die, um, you're greeted by a handler that tells you in your last life, you chose to be a man, but once again, you can always choose whatever creature you want to be. Every time it's your turn to live again, you get to um, be whatever creature you want. So you remember a wonderful day you had once as a man watching a horse grazing in a field and you admired its simple life, just eating grass in a field. And you say, you know what? I'd like to be a horse. No sooner said than done, you start to feel your arms change into legs and your hands turn into hoofs and your neck lengthens and your muscles are changing. But then you start to feel your brain turning into a horse's brain. And you realize that you're starting to forget what a man is. And you realize, oh no, what I loved was being a complex man, appreciating the, the comparatively simple life of a horse. But if I don't even know what a man is anymore, I won't appreciate my simple life. You think I've made a horrible mistake and you try to say, wait, but all that comes out is <laughs> And at the last minute before you completely turn into a horse, you have a horrifying thought, which is, I wonder what kind of beautiful, complex creature I must have been before that chose the simple life of a man. You know, and like wow. every chapter is like that. It'll be like chapter seven. Uh, when you die, you find out that yes, God was in fact the creator, but he's not a manager. He created us billions of years ago. He knocked over the first domino and he's off doing other things. He doesn't even know we exist anymore. You know, um, so I just love, love, love this format of 40 different answers to one question. So uh, two years ago, I was like walking down the road and I suddenly was like, stopped in my tracks. I was like, oh my God, I want to write a book called How to Live. Like 25 different answers to that one question. Each chapter deliberately conflicting the others. Each chapter completely convinced it has the right answer. <laughs> persuasively telling you that, no, this is the way to live. And then the very next chapter will completely go against it. Because that's honestly how my mind works most of the time. So it's like, um, you know, one chapter will be, here's how to live. Um, you must be fully independent. All misery comes from um, uh, regrettable commitments 
to things. So you must at all times be completely free and independent. You must be free of all technology choices. You know, everything is all free of all commitments and relationships and this. And it'll be a chapter that's telling you like how to be completely independent. And you just follow that to the logical conclusion. And, you know, then the very next chapter will say, here's how to live, commit. <laughs> you need to pick a place, pick a person, and all the deeper joy in life comes from commitment, et cetera. And so um, uh, I couldn't come up with 40 to match the book Sum. So my book is definitely an homage to the book Sum, but I came up with 25 different ways to live, and it's a blast to write because um, I actually believe in each one of these 25, and they're deliberately conflicting. And uh, That's yeah. so cool. Uh, so that's what I'm writing right now. That's great. <laughs> How many of them have you tried? Oh, God. Uh, I don't know. Good. I'll, I'll think about that. <laughs> I don't know the answer to that. I f it feels like most of them at some point, you know, I told you that I like whimsically got married because I'm like, commitment. That's what life is all about. You, you just pick, you commit. It's the joy of missing out. You get pride in all the choices you're not making. And it's like, did that for a few years and... <laughs> until I didn't and yeah um yeah I've gone all the way off the independent side I've gone all the way to the uh learning and growing like learning and growing that is the most important thing in life and if that's the most important thing in life then it logically follows that you would live as such and so I'm also um it's written in, of course you know a very succinct format um with what I call directives that we can talk all around a subject. We can talk for many paragraphs around it, or you can just say two sentences that say, do this. And I actually think that um, it's like the entire tree is contained in the seed. And sometimes I think the directive, just telling somebody without precursors or apologies saying, do this, is like the seed that carries all the other philosophies with it. The action is what really matters rather than all the talking around it. So it's written in a, uh, a laughably uh, direct, do this, live like this, marry this kind of person, live in this place kind of format, because it's just more succinct and amusing instead of babbling on about things. That's interesting. And especially given the context that a lot of them were completely contradictory, uh, it might produce this meta insight in people that yeah, there are all these different options, but if you're not doing it, then it doesn't really matter. Right. Really? Yeah. Yep. I like that um, it's absolute in this relative kind of format. Like it's absolute in every single chapter, but then the next thing contradicts it. So it, I, I would imagine that relates to what you were saying, this relative meta insight that you would get. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very cool. And it's at, at first I thought that I was going to need a really damn good conclusion like to wrap it all up. But then I thought that um, that's the difference between art and instruction. It's like when, when you kind of think of something as art, then everybody's just free to make their own conclusion. If you're thinking of yourself as a professor, then you're trying to you know, tell people what to think. So I've decided that this is really more of an art project than a, I'm no professor. So there is no conclusion. Never conclude. That's the final rule. <laughs> Never conclude. Never and conclude. so concludes our interview. <laughs> <laughs> Should we end with that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's interesting, actually, because this uh, loops back to that idea of leaving space. And if you leave space, then it, something else can emerge. So if you, if you have a very specific conclusion, then it doesn't leave space. But if you leave it open, then all kinds of insights can emerge for people and it might be totally different for different people. Yeah, it's it's fun the idea of somebody saying like, and just the thought of somebody saying, what did he mean by that? That's more interesting than me telling them exactly what I meant by that. Hmm. Hmm. Are you uh, at all thinking about what kind of legacy your work is going to leave in the world? Um, I think that, um, it, like, I don't, 
have any spiritual beliefs really, but I think that um, our personality lives on after we die in the things that we create. Like if there's any argument in favor, like something that we could concretely objectively call an afterlife, it would be like um, the way that you share your personality while you're alive. So it's like right now I can still go read uh, things written by people that are dead and totally get their personality, their way of thinking, their, uh, their framework. And um, so to me, they might as well still be alive. Um, that's what's weird when people get all, you know, upset that Ray Charles died or something. I'm like, really, well, how many of his albums have you bought in the last 20 years? No, I mean, his new music, none. So why, he didn't, the man you didn't know died, but it doesn't matter because the things he created are very alive. So I don't um, think about, I don't like worry about my legacy like that, but thinking that thought that I just described um, is the kind of thing that kicks my ass a bit, uh, you stress, right? Um, towards uh, sharing more of my thoughts and ideas. Um, and I use my site for that. Like to me, my site is the legacy. Like anytime I'm doing anything on my site, I just imagine like this will be around for a hundred years after I die. Uh, another reason why, you know, it's not on WordPress and the less code, the better, because like future somebody is going to have to maintain it. So I just use bare bones HTML because who <laughs> knows what holographic devices this will be seen on in the future. And, you know, um, they might not have JavaScript so anyway. Yeah. <laughs> huh? Yeah. That's interesting. <laughs> I, I think, I'm, I, I think long-term to a fault. Like when I said earlier about the tattoos, like, you know, it's like even at the age of 14, I was like, I might not want tattoos when I'm 80. People are just looking at me weird. Like, dude, why are you thinking about being 80? I was like, well, it's coming. So I don't know. I, I just often think of everything very long-term like that um, to a fault. It's, it's strange to me that you, you say you're non-spiritual unless you, and, and yet you have so many spiritual practices that you engage with? I don't know. I mean, it's, it, they're practices, but I mean, I haven't looked up what the word spiritual means, but it seems to, it seems to be about like a, a spirit, like a, and spirit being like a synonym for ghost, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's <laughs> belief in some uh, like entity spirit thing. And I don't, I don't have that. So I don't know what you would call mm. it. I just, yeah, I, I think it really comes out of that what we've already discussed. This you've given yourself time to contemplate things that others have contemplated when they've had time and, and have come up with some great ideas and and um really figured out how exactly you want to live your life. I mean, that's what in my mind what spirituality or what religion is all about is how how to live. Hmm. Cool. The brand new Future Thinkers members portal is now live. Develop your sovereignty and self-knowledge with our in-depth courses, get access to our weekly sense-making calls, join the Q&As with past podcast guests, and much more. Become a Future Thinkers member today at futurethinkers.org slash members. To stay up to date with new episodes, subscribe to Future Thinkers on your favorite platform. And leave us a review or a like. It really helps out the show. And don't forget to share this episode on social media. Enter the Future Thinkers giveaway and win our brand new community membership, including in-depth courses, private calls, and more, as well as a supply of Qualia, a complete cognitive upgrade for your brain. To enter the contest, simply go to futurethinkers.org slash giveaway and sign up for our mailing list to instantly get our 50-page guide on how to adapt to the future. There are many ways to increase your chances of winning. Enter the competition today. This episode is brought to you by Qualia, a nootropic supplement that helps support mental performance and mood. To get 10% off, use the code FUTURE at checkout. And to learn more about neurohacking, visit futurethinkers.org slash neuro.